I'm Adam Bentley. Um, I play in a band called The Rest, and tonight we're putting on a concert at Bishop's Park. It's part of a series called Songs from the Bishop. It was uh, an idea that Brian Goodman, who actually lives uh, across the street and is, is one of the caretakers of the park, and he had this idea for multiple years, and I had moved into the city uh, and on Stinson Street, and I just got to know Brian, and Brian found out I was a musician, and we started talking about it, and I uh, started asking some friends if they wouldn't mind coming down every Thursday and performing, and this is the second year we've been doing it, and it's, it's been pretty great. I started getting involved with the Stinson Neighborhood Action Plan after it being presented with the ideas that the city was trying to implement and, and finding out that it was going to be really community driven and, and there was possibility or it seemed like there was possibility for change and I, I think uh, myself and others from the community have put a pretty great plan together with the city and hopefully a lot of these changes we'll see happen over the next five years. And then when neighborhood development came along they said okay let's ramp it up let's uh, uh, work with your existing uh, good projects and and make this even better so I definitely feel that we enhanced or helped that change that was already in progress in many areas and uh, added to the dialogue and the sheer numbers of folks uh, when it comes to empowerment and engagement in both those communities with the neighborhood development piece. Yes, there's an extreme makeover happening on the 22nd, I believe, uh, at Carter Park. And uh, to go along with that, we got some grant funding and some money from the city of Hamilton. And we're going to be putting a stage one of a mural uh, project that we're putting together on the overpass that goes through the city. So this stage is where the basketball court is, so it's going to be the backdrop for the basketball court. My name is uh, Jerry Palmatier and I'm uh, chair of the Keith Neighborhood Hub. I've been involved in this neighborhood since uh, 1977. In the Keith Neighborhood we have approximately three parks, uh, the one behind me being the largest North Central Park which started out as a small little piece of sliver that was given to us and we've expanded it until we have an all-purpose court, splash pad. We have one uh, rec center that used to be the old Robert Land School, it's now the Eva Rothwell Center. We have uh, one fully functional uh, community garden right at the moment on Burton and Douglas and the uh, second one that's in the process of being built uh, which we will have ready for next year at uh, the uh, churchyard of St. David's Church. big percentage of our uh, families own their own houses here so they've been here quite a while. Well the neighborhood uh, plan basically is a plan with uh, a major objective to really uh, bring neighborhood together and certainly uh, develop itself in a way that it empowers uh, local citizens to come together to define their needs and certainly make sure that those needs in either the short or long term are met. Well we've done uh, neighborhood cleanups where we had uh, went through the alleys and through the streets and uh, had people bring stuff out to us. Uh, we think we took at least uh, seven or eight truckloads of uh, garbage away. One of the projects that we're really working on is to get smoke detectors in every house in the neighborhood. And this is a free program. They'll just have to come over and sign up. Uh, we'll come in and put it up for them. We believe in what we're doing here and uh, we've been lucky enough to partner with the city who provided us with the expertise in a lot of uh, places and where to go so uh, we've always had the, uh, the drive and the want to get to where we're going down here and we're going to keep it up and uh, yeah, just a, just a great place to live. I think success really is when we, you know, not to sound biblical, but I think when you really can can see a reflection in the neighborhood where where your neighbor does love your neighbor truly and, and works together with them to protect each other and to uh, to work towards, uh, you know, providing an environment that is uh, conducive to everyone uh, who uh, lives in that particular neighborhood. So people that come out and uh, they don't ask for great rewards or anything they just come out and volunteer and join in because uh, that's what they like to do my name is nasir malik 
and uh, I'm involved with the Western planning team for last five years. Actually, the first time when I hop in uh, to McQuestern uh, Community Center, I see that uh, there was a bunch of people working voluntarily and working for the community. And I actually, I was looking for something to involve for the youth sports activity. So since I involved that, you know, I work with the different projects for the healthy living, for uh, reduce poverty. From my perspective, I think what we're doing today that uh, wasn't prevalent in the past is ensuring that we don't uh, create an environment that's conducive to didactic types of governance, meaning top to the bottom. At present, we are empowering residents to be part of a solution. We now are in a situation where we recognize that people know their community and we need to listen to them rather than vice versa. And as a direct result, it's an empowering process and one that sees results. And my question is a perfect example of that. So is Crown Point. If we look at the back, like five years back, uh, six years back, when I see that it was very hard to even, you know, walk in that area. Since we involved there, you know, that area is very secure. When I say that McQuestion, I love to live there and the people are so helping, very cooperative and diversity special. Empowerment is allowing the process to unfold and develop without any intervention or intervening on, on behalf of the resident. We act as we are, we're requested to act and as a direct result of that, very rarely is there a presenting problem that I need to get involved with because frankly the empowerment process has found the solutions every time that there's been any type of uh, disagreement. And we're very fortunate in the McQuestion community to have very active, dedicated members who truly know what the presenting problems are and are willing to work on trying to put a plan together, but more importantly, are motivated to take action on those plans. The, beside this uh, kind of festivals, uh, I think we do that block party and crawl parties in the street. And I think uh, we should uh, move forward and you know bring more cultural stuff there where people can, you know, enjoy each other culture to understand each other culture and religion as well. My name is Bill Simone. I'm a resident of Beasley. Uh, I live in a senior apartment. I've been involved with Beasley since 2006. Beasley is my, uh, my love of my friends. Prior to neighborhood development, I think you could already see that neighborhood associations working with the various businesses and, and folks, the residents uh, living in Beasley, were making a very significant progress. Uh, Beasley working on the charter. The charter was signed last June the 26th on a Saturday, and there was a huge barbecue in the park. Everybody came. Since then, we have worked on a program called the Neighborhood Plan. That um, complemented well the neighborhood development piece when it did arrive. And uh, hopefully it'll be kind of a, uh, a guide for a lot of the other neighborhoods out there. What we're getting from neighborhood development is more people involved in the process, coming up with ideas. We just had the skateboard event. We had the barbecue for summer. We'll have the winter fest. Projects become much more tangible, much more real, and all of it Virtually all of it is uh, due to the deciding factor of those people who have committed their time as volunteers and their dedication as volunteers who live and work in those communities. Uh, the people that couldn't get out of here fast enough are moving back in. Torontonians are moving in. People start coming from outside, buying up these beautiful stately homes and fixing them up and, and becoming themselves a part of these neighborhood associations and these groups. That's success to me, and I think neighborhood development has uh, clearly uh, given us a path toward that success. I just want, in my old age, to live in peace here and to work with the younger groups to make a better, better neighborhood. <laughs>